There was a beginning before this endless place, but from the first moment here the woman was nothing more than an animal cowering, mindless with fear, all sense gone with one glimpse of the unimaginable emptiness of eternity. This was her first day, scrabbling in the dirt, choking to breathe through the terror. But that would prove to be nothing, for as all days die, so that first night came upon her. The night, a thing of filth and fury, raging across the endless place, sweeping and smashing all before it, on and on, until abruptly, violently. Gone. Day again. For the woman, the only thing more cruel than enduring it was surviving to face another day, sensing what was yet to come again. And each new day it was instinct alone that drove her to dig a little deeper into the ground, seeking shelter. This became her life. Every daylight moment spent scrabbling at the earth, and every night pressed tight into it, breathless with terror. An endless cycle in this endless place. And though the woman could not count them, that first day aged into a thousand years. When exactly the realisation finally came, it was exhilarating a release. She had not aged with the passing years. Her lonely exile was transformed. Mindless survival became conscious struggle, commanding her fears and navigating the treacherous, shifting slopes of debris as though she had been born to them. But more, to discover slowly the true nature of the waste itself, the accumulated detritus of humankind, its rubbish, its leftovers, discarded and lost, deposited here from the real world in the violence of the night. Thus the woman learnt of all the waste could offer, for all it denied. Not just an eternity or shelter from the night, but books and pictures and clothes and pretty inconsequential things, human stuff. And so it was that the woman found herself again after so long. She was Matilda, Queen of the Waste. But if she had found solace, it was to be short-lived. One ordinary morning, Matilda was on patrol as normal so eager to discover what fresh deposits the storm had brought that she almost did not notice it in her haste. An anonymous red tin, two neat lines of holes piercing its lid. Breath stilled and heart racing, Matilda bent to free it and saw the child, so tiny and precariously blue, abandoned to the waste like any other piece of rubbish. Something broke inside. Caught between rage and pity, she cursed the wasters of the real world, named the child Biscuit after its tin, and vowed to raise her as her own. Rearing a baby was the most difficult challenge Matilda had ever faced. But in a few short years, Biscuit grew to become her second shadow, her beloved companion and eager pupil. They adventured on the waste by day and learned together by night, until it seemed as if it had been this way for always, and always would be, but for the terrible truth that Matilda could not confront. Biscuit was ageing normally. She would live to bury her daughter and face eternity alone again. Ultimately, inevitably, it was Biscuit's own inquiring mind that arrived at the same devastating conclusion as fifteen short years came and went. Her fate, to spend a brief, unhappy life trapped here and then be gone, no more than a fleeting memory. It drove Biscuit wild, savage, she cursed her mother and their endless prison, swore that she would not accept it and would rather die trying to escape than live like this. And so the arguments raged each night, until it seemed as though the bunker had been breached by the violence of the storm. In the grey, exhausted light of morning, Biscuit packed and spoke to Matilda for one last time, urging her to come too, to strike out across the open waste, to find an escape to the real world. But Matilda would not listen. She set her jaw and scorned Biscuit's folly. Louder as she turned her back and walked away, eyes still burning with reproof as her daughter shrank to a dot on the horizon and disappeared. She would see sense, if it took a night alone on the waste to prove Matilda's point. But when the next morning finally came, there was no sign of Biscuit. Nor would there be for six further mornings, until despair finally broke through Matilda's pride. She had failed her daughter. Biscuit was gone, never to return. And so it was that Matilda found herself right back where she had begun, out upon the open waste, her home, and the last thousand years abandoned to one thought alone, to find her daughter, 
or die trying.